Got another question for the periodicity topic. So this question covers metallic bonding and ionisation energy. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you wanted to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So with any metallic bonding diagram, I would always say to my students, do three rows of three and offset that middle row. So in the case of magnesium, you need a two plus charge. So that's a lattice of magnesium two plus ions and just dot some electrons around. These are delocalized electrons. And why does magnesium conduct electricity? It's because the delocalized electrons can move. Moving on to part B, we've got to write the equation that represent the fourth ionization energy of magnesium. So that's going from the three plus ion to the four plus ion. There's the electron that's been removed and the state symbol for any ionization energy equation is gas. So just make sure that your state symbol looks like a G. Next part, we're going to use the table on the page before to explain how the successive ionization energies provide evidence that magnesium is in group two of the periodic table. So we're looking for the first significant jump up in ionization energy, and that occurs between the second and the third. So what that's telling us is these two electrons must be in an outer shell, and then the third electron must be in an inner shell, so therefore, it must have two electrons in its outer shell. It's in group two. So there's my answer. The first significant rise in ionization energy occurs between the second and the third. This shows there are two electrons in the outer shell. So moving on to the final part of the question, you'll notice I've drawn up the electrons in box representation for the magnesium atom. So which of the ionization energy numbers involve taking electrons out of a full orbital? Well, obviously, the first ionization energy is going to be to take one of these electrons out, so obviously that's full. The second ionization energy is going to be to take that one out, so obviously that won't be full now. The third ionization energy is going to be to take one of these paired electrons out, so we'll just say that one there, so obviously that's a full orbital. So we're on to the tricky part of the question now, so we've got to think about how the electrons are going to leave this 2p subshell. So if you think about Hund's rule, the... 2p subshell fills up, you sort of half fill the orbitals before you pair up, while the electrons are going to come out in the, the same way. So the next electron to come out is actually going to be one of these, so again that's a, that's a full orbital, and then the next electron to come out will be this one here, so that's the fifth ionisation energy, again that's from a full orbital. So that means ionization energies 6, 7 and 8 are all going to be coming out of singly occupied orbitals. So obviously we don't tick them. Ionization energy 9 is going to be taking this one out. So obviously that's a full orbital. This will be 10, so obviously we don't tick that one. This one will be 11, so we do tick that one. And obviously 12 we don't tick.